It's finally here! One we waited for eons, and we prayed to Miyazaki every week, and it's finally here! It only took six years. From now on, I'll write two letters a week instead of one. The Elden Ring Shadow of the Erdtree DLC trailer dropped, and it hit harder than a drunken stepdad because it totally left us stunned. It has it all. New areas, new weapons, new bosses, new feet, and everything a grassless tarnished like you could ask for. But in case you were in school listening to Mr. Garrison talk about his failed marriage or afflicted with the sleep status effect, let us do a quick rundown of what we saw. So let's dive into it. As it was speculated with the preview image, the DLC seems to involve Michaela and it starts with some dude in Moog's palace looking at his defiled corpse. Shame on you, Moglister. In the next shots, we can see the tarnished and torrent traversing the very same fields with the transparent gravestones from the preview image, as well as the Erd tree that has been shadowed all over. This must be the Land of Shadows, as pointed out by FromSoft in the description of the DLC, so we might be travelling between realms during the journey. We get a glimpse of new NPCs, but I want to point out this guy. Judging by the lilies and the colour of the room, I'm betting that this dude has to be Saint Trina, so we might get some new sleep stuff. This area looks a bit familiar and we thought it could be the Carrion Study Hall, but it's just speculation, of course. What do you think? Tell us in the comments. This may be one of those famous Miyazaki swamps, although Torrent seems to be running on regular water. We personally hope it's a death blight swamp, but of course it seems to be part of the set of new areas of the DLC, which seems to include big fields and at least one legacy dungeon. The price of the DLC is $30, so we can hope it to be at least half the size of the original game. We are presented some new enemies, and among them there are these ugly things that look quite similar to the worm heads in the Altus Plateau forests. And this fact could support the theory that the DLC has will include something along the lines of realm switching or time traveling, which would not be the first time a Souls game does this. The DLC of Dark Souls 1 takes place in Ulaseel after all, which is none other than Dark Root Garden in the past. We're shown some nice feet, Miyazaki style, and then we're introduced to this guy. His name is Mesmer, the Impaler, and he seems to be the big bad of the DLC. How do we know? Well, his name is right there in the merch description. Nice job, FromSoft. You really messed this one. And here comes the juicy part. Juicy. We can see what appears to be dual katanas with a new moveset. This could be a special kind of weapon, one of those that are two-in-one when you two-hand them, such as the Radan sword or the ornamental straight sword. And this little dash thingy could either be a new mechanic or an ash of war. These appear to be either new consumables or a new type of weapon. Judging by how he holds them, they may be a new type of weapon. Whatever this spell is, it looks badass and we can't wait to see its properties. They also seem to have made the bow glitch from Dark Souls 3 into an ash of war for crossbows, and the one that caught our attention more. Feet weapons! Or maybe they're special fists like the Bone Fist in Dark Souls 2. And after giving us a peek into some enemies, my god this one is horrifying! I hope his spine turns out to be a weapon though. We are presented with this. I will not be far behind. May we meet again. I don't know about you, but I always thought that crucible attack was badass. Oh yeah, and Michaela seems to be there too by the end. Now there is an interesting comment that summed up a lot of things people pointed out in the comment section of the DLC trailer, so we're going to show what he's talking about right here. Thanks a lot. The Hunter 8417. The ghostly shawls are reminiscent of the ones seen in Marika's chambers. The lion face guy is possibly an omen judging by the horns on his body slash animal features. These hippos seem to have death blight moves based on the thorns they summon when attacking. And something not shown in the trailer. There's a preview image in the Steam Store page of the DLC where the Tarnished is doing the same move. It Maybe a new spell. These cliffs seem to have death blight roots. What seems to be a present hero's grave can be seen to the right of the tarnished head, and that would make sense because this other thing also resembles a hero's grave. This looks like a turbo rune bear, and this figure seems to be affiliated with the Golden Order based on a tire and the stick in their head. There are possibly many things we missed, but that's where you come in. Tell us in the comments section what you found hidden deep in the trailer. We can't wait to read you. I know it 
looks wonderful. But let's talk about what we didn't see, though. We all have been talking about how we would like covenants for Elden Ring, yet we don't seem to have any indication of that happening in this trailer. There are no multiplayer scenes nor anything that remotely resembles it, which could mean that the multiplayer will remain untouched unless a new trailer comes out. But only time will tell. And if you can believe those shady gaming journalism sites, expect over 10 new boss fights, 8 new weapon categories, and a poison swamp. I'm so sick of this. Well, are you not entertained? Are you hyped? We will be releasing more videos about the DLC and builds you can be preparing for it. So throw away your hopium tanks and hook yourself to the hype tank. You're gonna need it, my little caramelized onion. Bye!